Hey, Dom. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Eric. How are you? I'm doing well. It's May. It's Pennsylvania. It's warm weather, cold weather, jump in the pool weather. It's ups and downs, baby. How are yep. things going on the west end of the state? Um, pretty good. It's a uh, roller coaster weather out here too. We just had rain come through. More rain on the way. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's going to be in the low 70s if we're lucky. Then we're up in the high 80s the rest of the weekend. It's been that way up and down. Yeah, that's why I'm ready for consistent nice weather. Get my Harley out. You know, get some riding in and uh, yeah, and uh, and also end of the school year coming up. Coming up. Yes. How about you? When do you guys end? Uh, we kids are done. Seniors finished today. Oh. Uh, everyone else is done next Thursday. Teachers are done next Friday. Okay. All right. Yeah. My daughters are done. Got? My Yeah. My daughters, uh, my oldest uh, graduated. So she was done last week. My, uh, my sophomore, you know, soon to be junior. She had half two hours in class yesterday for a final and then she was done. And my eighth grader finished up with a half day today, but, Good old dad gets to go till next Friday, kind of in the boat with you. So I jokingly have told them I will be knocking on the door and they will be waking up as I have to wake up. So at least just for a little bit, they can go back to bed, but I will be disrupting their beauty sleep. <laughs> That's nice. So, yeah. so but then uh, family traditions is the only thing they're bummed about. I always do, uh, for whatever reason, started it a while ago. When we all have our first day of summer vacation, I make them breakfast in bed. So they're ready for it to be tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, I'm still in school. So they're, they got to wait for two Mondays till they get breakfast in bed. But uh, something to look forward to. That's always, that's a good tradition to have. It is. It's fun. Well, you know, you're there on the West End. I'm here on the East End. Right now, it's not raining in our studios. I think it's time we crank something up. What do you think? Sounds good. I think uh, it's about time. We're a little bit late, but I think it's time for the PACT part. Yes, sir. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our May edition of the PACT pod. My name is Eric Verno, Vice President of the PACT, and with me, Dom Salvucci. Southwest Regional Director. And, yeah, uh, awesome. We are here winding down the school year. Um, before we with, with, episode, with episode 12, sir. Episode yes. 12. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, go ahead. Before we get started, what are you thinking? Um, well, with recent events... Um, we did want to kind of take a pause and acknowledge and uh, let the people down in Uvalde, uh, Uvalde, you know, our thoughts, prayers, our sympathies go out to you. Um, you know, it, it is, it, it hurts everybody and I feel for you, you know, hopefully that's something other districts don't have to go through. Um, but you know, as much as we can support you, we do. Yeah, definitely thoughts and prayers, and uh, you know, I can only imagine what they're going through. But um, yeah, definitely, what we can do from here is, you know, definitely take that time and pray and uh, be very thankful for the days we have. So, yeah, yeah, some amazing uh, stories coming out of that whole situation. So, um, yeah, but uh, so as we have uh, the close to the year, we're kind of saying PACT is on our way to summer vacay, and uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about. Our topic of today, Dom, is how are you spending your summer? How do you plan? Hopefully, it's how do you plan to spend your summer, and hopefully those plans come to fruition. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, really we talked about, you know, uh, relaxing and recharging. Um, so, you know, we definitely want to recharge and relax and, and take some time with the pod here. The pod will be taking a summer break. We'll still be um, doing some pretty exciting things, and we'll talk about that more later in the show. Um, but some cool stuff coming with uh, – with the pod. So we did message the audience. We did send out to the PACT um, ed tech entrepreneurs, the, uh, all the members of PAC that are advancing ed tech to make just life better for their kids and uh, some interesting uh, results. Why don't, you, why don't you talk a little bit about those, Dom? Well, we pulled the members and we sent out a Google form asking them, what are your summer plans? Uh, they were rather general questions, relaxing, recharging, uh, some people were teaching summer school. 
Are you prepping for next year? Do you taking professional development or grad courses? Just doing some reading for pleasure, and you know, what were some favorite summer activities? We got some we got some good responses back. Yeah, a lot of good things there. You know, um, you know, the way to relax or you know what you're looking to do to recharge. Um, I do laugh about uh, reading for pleasure. I, I jokingly say I'm, I'm, I, I read blogs. I don't read books. But that's always a joke when we have KTI in the summer about uh, making a reference to the teachers and how many of you have a big bag at home filled with a whole bunch of books that you were hoping to read and were in July and you haven't touched those yet, you know. Um, but, yeah, but reading for pleasure is a different, different scenario. So, yeah, yeah good stuff. So, um, yeah, 100%. I know they had multiple things that they could check, right? But everybody was like, I want to relax. Yes. Everybody was like, you know, 100% of people that responded are reading for pleasure, which is awesome to see. That is self-care is a big thing, um, especially after the last few years of um, education being all turned upside down. And this year it wasn't quite back to normal. You know, so that that is one thing. Uh, the one trick I found because we have the, the pool going in the backyard, I have the pool books. I'll get, you know, it, um, my mom will give me some of her hand-me-down books that you know, she got for free from friends or I'll go to the dollar store and I'll get some pool books if they get wet it's no harm no foul and i can sit in the pool and read or sit by the water and read and then i have you know my good books that i read on the porch don't get near the water because i collect those and much <laughs> to my wife's chagrin <laughs> <laughs> um in my ebooks you know so that, that's the way to get around you can still have fun at the beach you get the cheap paperbacks so if they get wet get suntan lotion on them or something it's not a loss you don't do it <laughs> to the public library books that's bad yeah, I gotta be careful with those. <laughs> hey, that's that, that's good. This is our second year with a uh, with a pool, and uh, I will tell you, uh, I was not relaxing or reading for pleasure when it came to opening the pool and uh, all the mistakes that were made in closing the pool uh, at the Casa de Verno here. So, uh, yeah, just rolling through that and dealing with uh, getting that all ready. And 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 I know, see, I always see pictures of your pool and your setup and. Uh, you know, definitely a lot more advanced than what we have so far, but that's a good idea. Now, once I get everything under control, algae in check, all my numbers in check, uh, you know, having a book or whatever, something to be able to read while I'm floating around or whatever, that, that, that's a good idea. I like that. That's a, that's a nice one. Hopefully a lot of you are getting a chance to either hit the beach or, you know, go to a, go to a local pool and just hang out and be able to have that time. That, that'd, be, that'd be nice. Yeah, that, that is, it, it is nice having the pool in the backyard. We just hit the local pool before that or hang out with friends or Erie's an hour and a half, not even from here. So we can make the Erie run. Um, but yeah, water, especially in the summertime when the heat's up, water fun, water parks are the way to go. Even a uh, little before we had this pool, we had the little inflatable 18 inch, seven foot by seven foot, bought a pump off of Amazon because there's too much water to dump, dump out every night. We ran that. Um, yeah. Very relaxing. Hmm. yeah that's good yeah um you know for us it's uh you know we have uh rehoboth beach delaware not too far away we can go hit ocean city maryland go for a little more a little bit more of a drive a little longer of a drive go hit uh new jersey shore so yeah not too not not, not too far to hit the different beaches but uh my family is very much a lake family and um so there's a lake that my wife used to go to all the time as a child growing up and so we try to hit that uh during the summer so we, we're there for about four or five days and Nothing like just waking up and having coffee on the dock and uh, being able to kayak. It's like, you know, you know, some of the people listening may not remember these days because they're a little younger. But Dom and I will where you hopped on your bike and you just took off. Yeah. You were playing baseball. You were playing basketball. And like when it started, when that sun started going down, that was like that was that was your little smartwatch. That's when you knew it was time to go home. And, and my town was so small. My, my parents would reach out to my grandmother because the baseball field we were playing was across the road and she would yell time for dinner, time to go home. I'd hop on my bike and ride home. Like, um, so our experience at the lake, it's not a real big one. And it's like the kids put on the vests, they hop on the kayaks and my three daughters and they're, they've, we sometimes will have one or two friends, different days or family come visit and they're gone. And nice. it starts to get dark, dark and you yell and you can see them on the other side of the lake. Again, it's not very big and they come paddling home and, but, you know, there's just that safety. They have the vest on. They're good swimmers. You know, but just like kind of like that carefree. I always think, man, that's like it's like back when I used to hop on my BMX bike and just take off, you know. Yeah. So it's yeah. hard doing it now. Like we'll take 
we'll go up to Erie and, you know, my daughter will take some friends, depending on where we go, depending on how crowded it gets. We'll give them a little bit of freedom and like check in certain times. And unless it's like crazy crowded, then we're like, mm, no, it's you know, too many people. But you hit the beaches up there and stuff. It, it's nice. It's bigger lake, but mm-hmm. that's where we used to yeah. go whenever I was a kid, up to Lake Erie all the time. Some of the state nice. parks, Western PA. Oh, very cool. Yeah, reading through some of the responses, just more specific, you know, they got the beach in the, in the, in the cabins, uh, fishing, yeah. kayaking. So reading in a hammock. Do you have That's a hammock, nice. Tom? I used to have a hammock. Mm. Um, the chipmunk the chipmunks got to it in the shed. I had to get rid of it. So I was like, oh. Mm. That's always my secret. Like, hmm, maybe this year for Father's Day, I might get a hammock. I don't know. I can just picture myself just bumming out on one of those things. Uh, we went We went uh, a couple years ago to a conference, and uh, you know, it was real rough. It was in Walt Disney World, but uh, for my daughter, for the Osteogenesis Imperfecta Conference. And I'll never forget outside, I think it was the, the Swan and Dolphin Hotel. I believe that was right. They had a whole bunch of like hammocks just all set up and like everybody ran and like we all hit a different one. And it was like yeah. hide and seek in hammocks. It was pretty fun. It's a good time. <laughs> good time. Just, just just hanging and swinging. I've traded my hammock in for a pool float. So it was an even <laughs> trade. <laughs> yeah, that's not too shabby. Not too shabby. Yeah. All right. We got oh, reading and traveling with family, yes. um, playing with the kids. But it's that's one and, thing, you know. You, you're you're with kids all day long. You come home, and you your kids have stuff going on. I know my daughter's getting a little bit older, and you know I look back to whenever she was real little, and all the time we had. Now as a teenager, it's kind of like you know you get the I'm do I want to go with my friends, or I want to you know my friends come, and yeah, you miss that as when they're little kids and they're semi captive audience because you just pick them up and carry them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny, even, uh, you know, we have a lot of different teachers that are also sports coaches and stuff. And I know I would come home and my kids learned that for the first, you know, half hour to an hour. They 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 had to give me a little distance because it was like, you know, I was in coaching mode. So they'd be like, oh, dad, can we do it? Because like, ah, ah, I was used to yelling on a football field. So you had to have that calm down time, but then you spend time with them. But, yeah. um, you know, and, and everybody's busy with so many different things. This time of year, we got teachers are, you know, we're going to see our students' baseball games and our students, you know, this and that. And and sometimes our kids want to tag along and, you know, sometimes they don't want to tag along with good old dad. You know, I go by myself. and um, But that's time away from them, but it's still investing time with the kids that we have, you know. Yeah. So it, that balance. So really that, you know, that time over the summer is really that time to really invest that time back into the kids that you were putting into your students. And so it's huge. Families, family's big, family's strong, you know, got to keep it, keep it in check. Uh, so, uh, like I said, we're going, we're doing a, a, a lake trip. Um, I will be visiting, I, you know, a little bit more business than pleasure, but I'll be visiting New Orleans and next, next month we'll be talking a little bit about ISTE, but I'll be down there, uh, as a member of, uh, the PACT group going down because next year PA, uh, ISTE is going to be hosted in Philadelphia. So we want to make sure, yeah, we want to make sure we have all that, all our ducks in a row and ready to go with that. Any, uh, any trips, trips with the family for you, Dom, or any trips for you? Um, Florida was what we were planning. That kind of fell through, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, couldn't find a place and the places we could find, they would probably accept my daughter because she's in the, I'm going to lay around, listen to music quietly mode. The let's splash in the pool and carry on was frowned upon so my neighbor and i were thinking we wouldn't stay long um (laughs) so we passed that up i think we're gonna go to erie hit uh waldemere park up there do some day trips around the area stuff like that yeah Um, you know do those the the small trips with uh family and friends do that i got some i'm doing summer school but it's all online so okay i will be you know my, my thing i get up in the morning uh go for a walk or do some stretching and stuff, get on the computer, have my coffee before everyone else gets up and, you know, set stuff up for the day, check and see if kids have any questions and go from there. So kind of my routine in the summer, mm. um, you know, and that's, that's built in. Cause I get up early anyway. I'm used to getting up early for the school year and I just tend to kind of cruise with that through the summer. Yeah. I find sometimes it's a little bit easier to wake up earlier in the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> Especially so has your, 
uh, you know, coffee on the deck, kick mm-hmm. back and listen to the birds and just kind of hang out. It's peaceful. Yeah, I definitely love that. Yeah. Um, so now your uh, your summer school is online. Has it always been online? No. Um, when I first started, I actually used to run the summer school down in middle school. Um, I, I ran our all-dead program and I ran the summer school. It was in person. That, uh, you know, we had a bunch of kids down there. And then the high school had in-person summer school. But I was at the middle okay. school at the time, so I did that. And then we transitioned to online and I did that for a while. But then it was like, was not worth going in? Because I spend more time driving than I would in the school because uh, we were just doing, you know, a couple hour shifts. So I got out of it then now that I can teach from home. But if I need to go in, you know, take the family, make a breakfast morning, I'd be like, let's go down. I'll, I'll run into school, meet with the kids face to face, and then take the family out to breakfast. There's some good places down where I work that have some good breakfast and make it, you know, morning of it. But it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad. And you keep in touch with the kids, see what they're doing, you know, over the summer. They have activities going on. It keeps. Keeps going because, you know, saying it was the last day for seniors in my school is bittersweet. Um, a lot of the seniors coming by to, you know, say goodbye and and touch base before they left because I'm not going to see them till graduation. Mm-hmm. And after that, they're gone. So it was like, you know, they're moving on. But it was, it was great when they came back to my room and, you know, hey, we don't want to interrupt custom now. Come on in. And, mm-hmm. you know, got the chance to talk to them. I see them in the hallways and stuff. We're not a big school, but. It was cool they came back like, hey, you know, you know, stop in and talk and say goodbye before they leave. So it was good. That's neat. Bittersweet. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, hey, we're teachers. We thrive on interruption. That's always my yeah. line. You're not interrupting. You're saving these kids in the room for me being a little less boring. I, I can be more <laughs> interactive. Yeah, they always crack up. No, that's cool. That's neat. It, it, it's It's got to be. I, I do miss not being in that when we were in the middle school connected to the high school environment. Um, you know, seeing some of those kids yeah. pop by, but um, you know, we get emails or this or that, and, and uh, so yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, well, you get the middle school, you get the kids getting ready to go to high school, you know, same kind of vibe, but they're just moving to a different building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was, you know, whenever I was in elementary school, it was always cool watching the, the kids that went to the high school or like elementary, the kids that went to the middle school coming back to visit the teacher, like, you know, those are the middle school kids and stuff. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you get that going. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's always funny seeing the, uh, the sixth graders as they're ready to leave our building at last day of school, they're tearing up and, you know, as we're, you know, in these final weeks and, you know, you're working on stuff and they don't want to be there and they're like, I can't wait to be out of here. And I always laugh. I say, listen, I'm going to get an email with you. I'm going to email from you two weeks after you're out telling me you're bored. You wish you were back in my room. Oh, I'll never, never, you know, it's those kids that always say no yeah. the most. They're like the first email you get. And you're like, ah, <laughs> uh-huh, I see, I see you there, Vic. I got you. All right, buddy. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, they're all in that, that stage, but, um, uh, but you know, going on when we get into our tech notes, I got a lot more things to share, but that's kind of like something that we do towards the end that helps keep the excitement. But, uh, we also do, our school does offer summer camps. So some teachers have, stepped up to offer we got teachers that are doing a ukulele camp we've got a drone camp so the kids actually um with the money they pay part of it goes towards the camp the other part goes they get a i think the one year they got like those mambos little you know hundred dollar um drones that they learned how to fly then they got to take one home oh, that's- um the teacher did one where they built some old school like this was a little bit more because they built like some old school those um motorized uh airplanes but the way it worked was just a coding thing. They, they found some company to code with, so they're learning how to code, fly the airplane. So um, we even have, I forget, there's like a survivor's camp. And, um, you know, the one they were doing all sorts of like STEM challenge building stuff, just hands on. So we try to do a lot of that at the school that the parents can kind of sign the kids up for. And um, and I think we're covered. I think it's almost every every week the building's not in the cleaning mode that we're able to be in there we are so i think we have about eight or nine camps going so um the one camp i do will be doing twice but i'll be there a full week for one and then i'll be leaving because i'll be heading to isti during one of them so um yeah so but we, we we try to do some different stuff so another way to keep in in contact with those kids and have them active and doing stuff so yeah, it's always that's great. So we call it our steam camp summer our summer steam camp so yeah it's a good time that would, that's a great idea. That would be a great idea to kind of use the seed and might pick your brain on that and 
yeah. go from there. Yeah, no, so yeah, and yeah, it's just a little morning. It's um, we get there at seven, kids get there at eight, they're out by noon, so it's just you know, just a little quick hitter, so yeah. Um, four days and you crank through. But yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. So it's, it's had a lot of a uh, lot of positive, you know, for the parents. We we do allow it. Like so, our building is a four, five, six building. So sixth graders, their last year, hurrah, they could do it. And um, we have allowed, depending on what camp it is, some third graders that are coming into the building, their ability to come in. So you got those kids that are more anxious. They get to yeah. see the inside of the building and get familiar with a couple locations before fall. So it's nice for that too, you know. Yeah. That is, a, it's a, cause I used to um, work Girl Scout camp for Lawrence mm -hmm. County. And, you know, the younger girls love being able to, like, whenever they get to stay and do stuff with the older girls, it builds that, you know, they get to work with the older kids. The older kids get the little chance of mentoring. And the younger, younger girls would get to see what they could look forward to. They'd see the older girls doing stuff. And they, can, you, can we do that? No, no, that's what we can get a little bit older, but you get a taste of it, you know. We'll do a little bit today, but when you're older, you get to stay overnight and do these other things. And it was mm. it was interesting to get the girls going. So I, I like that concept of letting the older kids, the younger kids come in and see what they have to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. And that's definitely a good time. All right, well, I know a lot of the stuff that I, I could also share about ties in with my tech notes. So I don't know if you're ready to kick over to tech notes. Right? What do you think? Um, Yeah, we could kick over to tech notes. That is fun. All right. No guesses right. we, this month. but. No, no guests. Just, uh, just uh, all, all beard and goatee uh, action. <laughs> <laughs> no breaks. All right, here we go. Let's crank. Let's do a little, little tech notes. Man, there's that there's that little riff in that tech notes transition man, that just makes me think of like John Cougar Mellencamp, like it's gonna kick over to oh yeah, it's so funny. All right. All right. Well, hey, why don't you kick it off with your tech note of the month? You know, I was gonna go, and I know we talked about this before. I was gonna talk about some podcasting apps, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm switching up. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was thinking over the summer is whenever I get a chance to really get into and, and kick back and do a lot of like um, extra research and prep for the next year. Twitter, it's free. It's social media. I don't think we've done that one yet. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, you know, we have the, the KTI chat going on. Uh, the PACT out of state runs a chat. But what I like, and even I use during the school year when I have time, uh, the SAT chat. It is an educational chat on Saturdays. They post the questions ahead of time. And I get a lot of great ideas. And network with a, a lot of, um, you know, educators from around the globe in the United States. And uh, Twitter is a great professional development tool. And, you know, summertime, like you said, you read a lot of blogs. I have more time in the summer to sit and scroll through Twitter and find articles and resources and click on them and kind of go deeper in the research. Um, because I'm not trying to grade papers and plan for you know, the next day and field questions, emails from students and things like that, putting out, you know, the fires in the classroom and trying to get kids caught up. So I have more time to kick back and look through and take a deeper dive on the tools instead of just putting them into a, a wakelet and, you know, I'll look at this later, I'll look at this later. I have time to actually look at it in the summertime, see if it's something I want to use in my classroom. So that hit me when we were talking, um, you know, Twitter's, great free resource yeah no, that's awesome and now so what let, let's take this further so with twitter you did mention wakelet yes. so you kind of use those hand in hand yes so explain how you pull like wakelet in hand in hand with twitter um you can in wakelet run searches with hashtags or um the at and the um net the account you're looking for so it's kind of like and i forget the tool it used to be free and then it went away, but we used to use it um, as a back channel. And I can't, I don't know if you remember, it was a, it was a free tool, but you could kind of run kind of like Wakelet, but you could make books out of it. And I used mm. to like run sat chat books. Um, and when I yeah, would go to conferences, sure. I can't remember the name of it, but it went away probably about five years ago. 
um, okay. which happens all too often with really good tech tools that I like. Uh, and then it's really like, nice. oh man, I'm scrambling. But um, yeah. with Wakelet, you can do searches for you know, the at accounts, hashtags, and it will go through and you can go through and put what you want in a Wakelet, kick the ones you don't want out, and it'll um, not choreograph. Um, the coordinate, uh, or... coord coordinate and pull everything in and put it on the uh, I'm almost in summer mode. My, my vocabulary is slipping. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. You know, and put it into the wakelet and I, I could save things that way. But I'll, what I'll do a lot of times, I'll do it manually. So I'm scrolling through Twitter. You know, I'll like certain tweets. Some I'll retweet. But a lot of times I'll go into um, on my iPad or my phone. I'll hit the link and I'll see what the tool is. Or I'll see like a tweet there mentioned something. And I'll go in and I'll check out the tool. And then from there, once I'm on that site, I'll push that site into a wakelet. And like, I have them, the list preset, like, okay, this is a tool for my classroom. This is a tool for professional development, or this is content for my classroom. And I just go in and I push it into those wakelets as I'm, I'm reading through it. I'm like, okay, I could use this. This one I might not be able to use, but one of my, uh, you know, one of my friends in another subject can use. And I'll push it into those wakelets manually as I'm looking through and, Instead of just taking the tweet, I'm going into the site and okay. you know, pushing the site over that way. I'm, I'm one of the people, I'm like, you know, the bad person at a conference. Whenever someone's talking about something, I'm in there playing with what they're talking about so I can ask questions. <laughs> right. um, and that's how I like with Twitter. I like to, when I see something, I'll go in and I'll play with it and kind of say, okay, is this useful for me or is this not useful for me or what questions do I have? And, you know, go that yeah. way. I'm more hands-on with, with these than just the you know, running through my head. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say uh Wakelet's kind of a newer um, app. Love it. You know, use it a good bit and uh, getting better at it every day. And I like the old school one I would use would be pocket. I kind of dump some things to pocket and send it over there and then I could kind of read them later. And um, not very cool. That's good stuff. All right. Well, uh, so every, I was going to say my tech note kind of tying into everything we're talking about the camp that I do over the summer to Minecraft camp. The uh, the work I'm going to be doing, I'm actually slated. I'll be in Oregon. Um, I'll be in Virginia um, and even be talking about it when I'm at ISTE a little bit. Minecraft EDU. So um, one thing that we're currently using in our, our classroom, all of sixth grade, has we, we developed a Minecraft, like a little, just a little unit the kids have to go through. And we jokingly say it's uh, dealing with a difficult HOA. And uh, everybody can have experience with that. We talked to the kids about how there's different regulations and things that you have to follow when you have a homeowners association. And so the kids have to, you know, pull in what we've learned about uh, ratios and percentages, create a garden. It's got a certain have, you know, certain types of flowers and stuff. They've got to pull in what we've done with perimeter. They've got to make one of our favorite things, Dom, a pool. Uh, nice. They've got to pull in and uh, animal sanctuary. Uh, and then we do a little bit more there again with um, percentages and pulling in proportions with the amount of chickens, horses, pigs, and different animals. Um, and then a pathway, pulling in prime number, where, you know, hey, your, your pathway has to have a prime number of certain blocks, whatever the, the main block is. Um, and then the big one is uh, the kids are working on finishing up and I give them a, a number amount and came up with a billing of like how much each block, you know, oh, if I want to use one of these quartz blocks, it's $4. If I want to use one of these diamond blocks, it's $5. And the kids have to build a house, three bedroom house, two bed. Uh, I, I just do three bedroom, one kitchen, one family room, uh, one bathroom, uh, one floor, and they have $10,000 to build the first house. And then, the, and then to put a roof on another 5,000. And so they got to kind of, you know, go through and make this build and they want to do these grandiose things. Then they look at the yeah. numbers. Uh, that was $50,000. <laughs> uh, I got to, I got to blow some stuff up. And, um, and then I teach them how to use, uh, we're using screencastify and then they're going to do, they're going to take me on a tour through their home. Cause for this project, it's on their Chromebook. So I can't have access to it in the evening. Okay. During the year in math class, we have a make, uh, I have a make this big, which I call, there's an old PBS Britain. So like a British PBS show called Maths Mansion. And it's, it's bad. And, uh, <laughs> but it had, it will go over some different concepts that we cover in math. Um, but it's like, these kids are like locked in this house. And in order to get out, they got to answer math questions. And you're like, what parent would not know their kids been locked in some mansion for like weeks, you know? <laughs> and, um, 
so we watch the show and they, you know, and all my kids are like, Oh, so, so I jokingly say then when we get, get a little further in the year, they have to make their own math mansion. Um, and there's no price limit on that. But then when we do different things in math, I say, Hey, now, you know, for the last 30 minutes, you're going to hop into and I'll open the world up on my computer. They go to their coordinates and they make an artifact of what we talked about in their math mansion. They've got to let me know where it is. And, and because it's on my computer, when I get home, I can pop the world open. I can go visit and check out their stuff. So, oh, so we cool. use it interactively all year. Right now, they're doing this activity. When I do the camp, we do it similarly. We do uh, an HOA where we have the kids build a lake house. And for the summer camp, I pull more coding in. You know, the kids okay. love. There's a. If you ever get a chance to play, um, there's a code to make one thousand TNT boxes. And so they start off and they, they, they learn how to code that and then they've got to blow it up and then they fill it with water and that becomes the lake. And this is a lake front uh, community, usually because I'm getting ready to go visit our lake. Yes. And then they got to fill the lake. They got to build their house and then we give them all sorts of things. So it's funny during the summer camp, we have the siren, like a YouTube siren. And when the siren goes off, you know, the first first day, they're like that eh, second day. By like the third day, they're like, oh, the HOA isn't happy about something. And we'll be like, oh, <laughs> they visited your property and you don't have any shrubs. You need to add shrubs, like just different stuff. So it's, it's pretty funny. But so that's how we keep them. So we get it. We get the coding in. We get the building in. They're working collaboratively as a group. They get to share like um, and, and man, even though I I do some work training for like uh, so PACT is in Pennsylvania and is in the northwest. So I'll actually do some training for NCCE which is hired by Microsoft. Um, and even though I'm doing the trainings and teaching teachers how to use Minecraft in their classroom, I learn so much from the kids every time. It's 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 wild. So so anyway, so tying in a lot of the different things that I have for the summer is just working with educators, working with kids and you know having them, you know, work with Minecraft and every school in Pennsylvania. So if you're listening, you're in a school in Pennsylvania, all of our um, all of our tenants has hey gina all of our tenants uh of office 365 has the minecraft edu all set up yeah i saw that earlier Corey, she's chilling in long island already she's yeah. already on her summer vacay feel <laughs> um but anyway and the cool thing is when the kids log in at school it's on their device and they can log on an xbox they can log on anywhere else they have minecraft and they're able to build um the other unique one i did was uh science class uh, this week, they had three days to create something in Minecraft based off of some science lab we did this year. So we do a big Connects Car lab. So I had Connects Cars. We do a Hot Wheels. So I had tracks and Hot Wheels. We do uh, stuff with bouncy balls, sneakers. So I had all the kids create these. And then there's a really cool, it's called a structure block that you can do. And the kids can actually export the file in a 3D shape. And then when you pull it into PowerPoint, you could actually set it to kind of like spin like a model. And so uh, the goal is next week on our last class is Tuesday that I'm going to pull up that file and I have it set to go. And I'm just going to have everybody's what they built shown on the big screen. So oh, that's, that's so, so definitely excited for that. And, yeah. And I, I tell them like down the road, they could actually export that and then eventually 3D print that. So not on the pancake pot, <laughs> but they could 3D print that. So, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, my, my students are bummed. I can't. I can get the pancake bought into school. It's just a matter of being able to print enough pancakes in the class period for everyone to mm. partake. And it's, <laughs> well, here, here's a funny one for you. I, I walked into, of all places, I walk into the church, and my daughter's um, culinary teacher goes to our church, and she said, "Hey, uh, your daughter made a comment that you know about the pancake bot." I'm like. Yeah, I, you know, I'm working on getting one. I don't think anybody has one. She actually got one from one of their um, – I'll get you in one second, Gina. So she actually got one in her room. So they actually worked on coding it and printing the pancakes. So, um, well, uh, so Gina, to answer your question, Minecraft EDU, education version, there is no age requirement. Um, schools, Office 365, so if your school – uh, some schools will do, they won't give their kids accounts till a certain age. That would be your only possible sticking point there. Um, but, you know, I, I just have when the kids go in and when I create a world, I, you know, I do creative. The cool thing about EDU is they have everything. They don't have to like 
it hunt for stuff like when the first the game first came out like it used to be like muffin muffin fire i don't even know it made something like they had to do stuff to make different food or clothes uh, or not clothes but food or like uh wood to be, be able to build in edu they have everything um it's just with your tech department if they have the office 365 set up again they all have uh it's 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 a part of all all of pennsylvania's contracts for microsoft office 365 um it's just you know whether they have it turned on or not so our school we use chromebooks um they turned it on for our whole building uh but you just need to make sure your, your teachers know because if the kids can hit the play store button on our chromebooks they show it and when they click it you know it works oh gosh high school Psh, that's a no-brainer yeah totally so i wasn't sure if you were going for the littles or the olders yeah high school like um we uh have a transition of principals so a, a new principals in another school district was visiting today and he was sharing how in the high school kids are using this to recreate civilizations world cultures they're able to go in there um the cool thing about it is especially like the chemistry unit i do with my kids 118 elements so the periodic table of elements if you know electron proton neutron you know the makeup you can create it chemical reactions will happen in there um I, I I I'm trying to think of some different examples with high school, but really the sky's the limit. Um, and then there is a cool feature where the kids can use a book and quill, and when they're going around and like um, taking pictures of stuff, when they're doing stuff, they can actually um, write a whole, you know, take a picture, draw stuff. They do selfies in front of stuff they made. It's really funny. And when they type everything up, they can actually export it as a PDF file and then submit that to you and share that. So you can go ahead and grade that. So. Honestly, I think I need to do a whole separate show purely on Minecraft because there's so much to do and I'll work on pulling some people in. But um, there's, it, it's it's honestly, it's it's really cool. Um, all the stuff they can do and they're going to be like, so you're going to at the high school. They're going to be like, can I bring my Xbox controller in because they know how to Bluetooth connect that. And then when they hook those things up, oh my gosh, the sky's the limit. They're like, Dude, they're so fast on a keyboard. It's like, you know, they're, they're slower. Um, they keep pace more with me. But yeah, with all that stuff. Now uh, they do a lot of really, really neat things. So, yeah. Uh, one cool thing is during KTI Summit, one of the sessions I do, I do work with teachers. We do go over Minecraft. Um, the other thing, Gina, I'm not sure how familiar you are, but Microsoft Learns. Um, it used to be the, they called it the MEC, the Microsoft Education Community. Um, but if you go into Microsoft Learns, there's a whole plethora of courses and actually, um, some good friends of mine at NCC are actually in some of the videos Microsoft is using for their education side. And you can get tons of ideas and it's free classes. You get badges, the whole deal. Uh, what was that last one? I think my integrated course would find this fun history, English tech. Oh, that, that's, yeah. I mean, you probably, you'd be able to set something up at the beginning and just spoon feed that all year long. But like I said, my kids, they come in for the first five minutes. We go over, you know, a review concept. Um, they'll maybe get a paper, they do a couple problems, I'll give them a quick Khan Academy, and then they roll right into Minecraft. So you want to talk about less behavior issues at the end of the year? Say, I just tell the kids, listen, it's the end of the year. I'm ready for summer. I'm ready for the pool. And you are the same. And I said, so here's what we're doing. We got a couple things I want to review with you because I want to make sure you're solid for seventh grade. And then in the end, we got some Minecraft. If you don't do what I need, no Minecraft. I'm not gonna yell. I'm not gonna get excited. I'm not gonna get cranky. You know. So I mean, talk about. I mean, it's like uh, what was it? Uh, Classcraft. You know, when you were able to do that for classroom management, the Minecraft thing. Oh, so simple. So yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely. Well, good luck with that. Reach out if you have any questions. Uh, Gina, definitely. I'll you know do what I can. But it is super cool. Seriously, it's really cool. And it's funny. Even the kids that. At first, when you mentioned Minecraft, they're like, oh, Minecraft, ooh, I want Fortnite, blah, blah, blah. Then you start doing stuff, like, they're digging it, and, you know, they're, they're like, teaching other kids how to do stuff. So it's pretty cool. But especially then uh, coding. Pick The coding is really cool. That would be something that's really neat. Make sure uh, to tie some of that in. So that that's fun. Yeah, good that, stuff. That sounds like it'll be a blast. Both teaching it and having the kids work with it. Yep. Yeah, I, when I'm playing, I mean, when I am uh, working on demoing <laughs> worlds, it's uh, yeah, it, it's a good time. It, it is fun. Um, and then you know, you kid tell them, yeah, yeah, sit wherever you want. You know, you just make sure you're doing what you got to do. And um, yeah, it's 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 good stuff. So again, they're able to show their learning really nicely. You know, definitely, 
um, almost more you know authentic than you know paper pencil so it's really good stuff so yeah so the cool thing is i'll be able to talk a little bit about that down in new orleans at isti uh it'll be interesting when i go to um into oregon and again they're chromebook based so it's right in my wheelhouse and um i remember when i got trained at, in redmond by the minecraft team it was really cool meeting them and the number one question was uh it was i don't even know six years ago now hey uh when's minecraft coming out for chromebooks we hear rumors and the, the head of education just got a big smile on his face and said microsoft is uh definitely interested in making sure minecraft is everywhere our customers are <laughs> and then like slowly walk off and you're like mm, okay okay um yeah but when that rolled out that that's a that's a game changer i want to thank gina for participating in the show yeah no nah, it's good stuff we're gonna work on something to be able to get like um we have the virtual green room so we give like virtual gifts and presents for people that participate. Yeah, yeah. We send stickers or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're working on it. So that's your next your next task, Gene. I think of some good uh prizes and giveaways for the PACT pod. And we'll, and we'll talk about it when we're at uh in P when we're in State College in June doing our board meeting. We'll have to have a PACT pod uh brainstorming work session. Study. Yeah, words we work study. So yeah, work session. No, good stuff. So I, I could talk for hours on doing some of that stuff, you know, um, but definitely really cool. So again, when I'm, when I'm traveling, I, I, it's just neat. It'll be, I'll feel like I'm normal again, you know, be able to fly to, to Oregon and just work with other teachers and seeing them get excited. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a little different level of working with kids and seeing them get excited when you yeah. see some teachers get excited. Like that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so it's funny um, when I was in Omaha, uh, we were actually right across the street from where they do the uh, college baseball World Series. I remember I, my, it was like my second training session ever. And I go in and there's this six foot eight, you know, bald guy. And he didn't want to be there. You know, it's like July. And I'm like, and I, I just worked on buddy, buddying up with him. I was like, if I win this guy over, I got the room. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. But yeah, he and he was, you know, one eye open. Until I mentioned the ability to export your files and 3D print them, and then, and then, when I said you could pull it into PowerPoint, then he was like, he was all in. Yeah, he he was he was buying what I was selling. It was awesome. It's fun. So, so it's just a different kind of working crowd. I think it was me. One of us. I hesitated. I think my internet glitched. Yeah, it did just there, but sometimes I can't tell. You know. Yeah, I wasn't sure I, which one of us. I'm like sitting there, I'm like, wait, you're quiet. I, is that, is that me or is that him? I better say something just in case. <laughs> well, we'll find out. We'll find out when we uh, put it up on YouTube. Now, speaking yeah. of YouTube, Dom, we got some changes going on on YouTube. Why don't we yes. transition in and talk a little bit about that? PACT Pod has its own YouTube channel. So no longer do you have to look for info at PACT. It is just the PACT Pod on YouTube. We're... Uh, Migrating everything over. I think we have all the all the sh main show videos over there. We have ex uh, leading into the show. A lot of times between shows, we'll put up a little teaser commercial. We have those over there. And over the summer, what else are we gonna be doing with all these, Eric? Yeah, well, uh, I was actually gonna pull it up real quick as well to show people the page. So if you want to work on that, but yeah. So what's really exciting is at KTI. Uh, on, I believe it's going to be the, it's going to be the, the last Thursday of the month in July. Um, we are going to be doing a live PACT pod as one of our sessions. So Dom and I are going to be talking to a bunch of teachers who are attending KTI. We're going to be doing a live pod. We're going to talk about podcasting in your classroom. So we're going to, I'm going to ask right now. I do a very, I mean, I, I, I have a slew of podcasts that I listen to for myself. I don't use it as much for kids, but that's one of the, my goals this summer to really study up on. But if you're watching this live, if you're watching this on our YouTube page down the road, if you have any podcast that you love to use in your classroom, email us at, let me pull this one up here. Uh, email us at pod at PACT.org. Uh, let us know, let Dom and I know what you use. We want to really put it together. We want to share with them because not only are we going to be podcasting live from KTI, but our goal is in February, we will be podcasting from P&C. We were hoping that gets accepted. I know an email came out that the 
the uh, request for proposals or the RFP, as the uh, cool kids say, is opening around June 1st and going through August. Um, so we're going to put in to be able to present and do the pod from Pete and C. Uh, I believe it's at um, Kalahari this year. So we will be there. Um, and then again, same concept and even have been people in the audience be able to participate. We're going to show the back end. Here's how we do it. We use StreamYard. Here's how you do show you the ins and outs of doing your own pod, but then also talking about um, how can you utilize podcasts in your classroom? All right. Do you have the pod? I'm sharing it right now. Um, let me go back. I'm sharing my screen. I think yeah. you have to run the control on it, but I have it pulled up. All right. I'm not. So as we were saying, we moved. We PACT info is where you used to be able to find all of our podcasts. Um, and then also uh, through, you know, Dom was going to talk about Anchor, but that's what we use to run our audio through. And so you can listen to our podcast on any podcast player that you prefer, and it kicks out through Anchor. But we wanted to make it easier to be able to have people go to one spot and not wade through the other PACT information. So we moved the PACT pod to its own location, own location. Let's see if I can pull it up here while you're trying there, Dom. Ah, oh, here we go. And I guess I should hit subscribe while I'm doing it. All right, let me share. Hold on, let's let's see, see here. Oh, here we go, Dom. I got it. Okay. All right, so here we go. The PACT pod all set up right now. One subscriber. So we're looking for more subscribers. I know sometimes these guys up here might scare you, but it's okay. <laughs> all right, we've got, you know, the May 22. 2022, uh, Dom went on to do a quick little spiel because there's a couple things that didn't fall in alignment last week um, as far as us, our ability to do the pod. So we pushed it to this week. Um, it also fell dealing with, uh, you know, me working through graduation stuff with my oldest daughter. All right. And then we got remake learning episode, St. Patrick's Day episode. All right. So March preview. So all of our pods are listed and we're working on building out our playlist just as tonight Dom talked about. Um, in the tech notes, he was talking about using Twitter and Wakelet, you know, Twitter for Education Wakelet, which we will have a live Twitter chat, um, the, the KTI chat during the KTI summit as well. So he talked about that. I talked about Minecraft EDU. So we're going to work on pulling these out and having a, a playlist just devoted to um, all of our tech notes and things so it's easier to find. So PACT pod. All right. Please, please, please subscribe. So. I know I hit subscribe, so I don't know if that was my delay or if we got somebody else while we were talking, Dom, but, but good yeah. stuff. But but again, the the definitely the plea of if you have uh, information on using podcasts in your classroom, we would love any and all information you can share. So that'd be yes. great. Please reach out. Um, we monitor the, monitor the email. You can also hit us up on Twitter. Um, you know, Reach out to us. We'd like to have you on the show. We're always interested in learning from new voices. Yeah, most definitely. All right, sir. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of really good stuff. You know, our um, one thing we're going to be doing too is increasing our presence with our our sponsors and uh, having some videos to talk more about them and the things they offer educators. And so I'm looking forward to to hearing from a lot of our uh, corporate council members on the show. They're scrolling across the bottom. Um... Do give a shout out to all of them because without these corporate council members, PACT would not be able to do what we do. Gina's excited for the Pete and C RFP. So, all right, very good. Good stuff. Yep, no, definitely. So, I think it's time now for us to, to officially thank our sponsors. What do you think, Dom? Sounds like a plan. All right, here we go.
All right. So I got still got to work on that volume. So if that blasts anybody <laughs> out, I do apologize. All right. So closing thoughts, Tom, as we're finishing up and getting ready to uh, head off into the wild blue sun vacay. Um, basically, just, you know, everyone's wrapping up their school year. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. And, you know, we'll see you soon. Um, enjoy the beginning of summer. Hopefully the end of your school year isn't as stressful as it is for some people. Um, you know, mine's briefly stressful, um, but I've been teaching for so long that I kind of have the process down. And uh, there's always little glitches that pop up, but it's one of those, you know, kind of like the kids. It's good to get out of school, but then you miss the interactions with the kids and, you know, it's kind of that mm -hmm. bittersweet thing going on. Yeah, definitely. You know, and even uh, change, you know, we, our team's making a, a move in our building. So holding off, but itching to pack things up and get things moved and, you know, being in the same room for, we had into our, I think we're like year 12 in our new building. So had to do this 12 years ago, now having to do it, you just accumulate stuff, you know, yeah. but yeah, um, but definitely excited to focus on that resting, relaxing, um, you know, and we did have a local scenario with the teacher occurred too so just puts life into perspective of spending time with family and um just just taking that time to truly relax and recharge i know sometimes it's it's hard uh, for teachers to kind of let go you know of things that were going on and to the best of your ability do it you know yeah. take time for you fill your cup up you've been pouring out all year long so yeah. you definitely want to make sure that that's taken care of. And, you know, hopefully we'll see you live when we're, we've got the pod rolling, whether it be, um, you know, uh, in uh, uh, July at KTI, you know, whether it's early in June because of ISTE rolling around um, yeah. and then even in the August time. So, yeah. Yeah. And the regular June show, um, I believe four out of the seven, possibly five out of the seven regional directors will be on. We're going to try and get the two that are going to be away, at least get some uh, pre-recorded interviews with them. And we'll have the regional director show coming up in June. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to combine the ISTE preview and the regional director show, talk about some stuff. And yeah, so it should be exciting. So, um, but definitely appreciate that. So we appreciate all of you who are listening live, all you who are listening in the future, you know, like, and subscribe and share the, uh, the, the podcast, share the YouTube channel. We really appreciate um, truly, you know, from, from August to the end of May or the middle of June, whenever you're going, we appreciate everything you do for those students yeah. in your classroom, making their, their lives better. We appreciate you advancing ed tech, being able to utilize it in a positive way, um, you know, in a purposeful way, you know, not just using it to use it. So truly appreciate all you all do. You definitely are um, you know, the heroes of those kids in those four walls. And uh, PACT fully uh, acknowledges that and, and understands that. So thank you for all you do. All right. Well, you know, as they say, Dom, PACT, we are the voice of EdTech in Pennsylvania and beyond. Have a great night, gang. Take care, everybody. Take care.